Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round, it's a time of day for Virtual Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends, connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea, there's so much to do. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. Learn and have fun, cool creatures to meet. It's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hi friends, welcome back to Virtual Small Fry School here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Rebecca and I'm so happy you're here today. Um, we will be hosting these live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on YouTube. And if you have any questions, please feel free to text the number in the description below. Now, I'm not wearing a mask today. But don't worry, all my friends here are wearing masks and they're distanced, so we're all being safe. And I want to acknowledge that I live and work on the traditional homeland of the Alutic Sukpiak people. And last week, we learned about really delicious plants and, um, that Alutic people used. They also used them to make tools, like rope, and we made our own dessert. It's called something mashed. And it was really yummy. Highly recommend that you do it. Thank you so much for sharing. So today, we're talking about seals and sea lions. And they're so cool. You can see the, the seals right behind me. But how do you know what a seal is? How do you know what a sea lion is? Well, let's find out. Friends, we are behind the scenes with my friend Forrest. Can we say hello to Forrest? Oh, he's saying hi. Forrest is a stellar sea lion. Look at its color. What color is he? Brown. Yeah, and he has special body parts that help him survive in the ocean. He lives here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, but stellar sea lions out in the wild, they use those body parts to help them survive. Forrest has eyes to help him see. He also has whiskers because they help him feel the currents around it and he can see or he can feel the currents better when it's darker at night. And he has those ear flaps, kind of like we do, right? Because he has to hear as well. Another thing about Forrest, is he has those big flippers in the front. And those big flippers, yeah, help him swim in the ocean really fast. He uses those front ones. And on land, he can stand on his front flippers. In the ocean, he uses them to swim. And Forrest is getting fed because um, he is being so good right now and he's um, cooperating with us and he's letting us learn about him. So I want us to say a big thank you to Forrest. Forrest, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for letting us learn about you. Wow, isn't Forrest awesome? I had a lot of fun um, hanging out with Forrest. And just like Forrest, our friend here is what color? Brown, yeah. And it has four flippers. Can you count with me? One two, three, four, yeah. And it has those um, external ear flaps like we do, just like that. And you can gently wiggle your external ear flap. And it has eyes, because it has to see, right, where it's going. 
and the nose to smell food. And our friend here is missing something. Do you know what that is? It's whiskers, yeah. Don't know what happened to it, but that's okay. But sea lions use those whiskers to uh, detect the currents because when fish swim around, they leave a trace behind. And so they can detect that trace and follow it with their whiskers. That's so cool. Now, you're probably wondering, but isn't that also what a seal does? Well, kind of. Let's find out what seals do. Hi, friends. We are back here on iSeal Habitat with our friend Katie. Mm. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Katie, tell us a little more about the animals that you work with back here. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie, and I'm a, a marine mammal intern here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. And we're here at the ice seal habitat, and we're going to learn about the ring seals today. So let's go meet them. All right, so I'm here with Spencer, and Spencer is one of our ring seals, which is a type of Arctic seal that lives in northern Alaska. Looking at Spencer's body, the ring seals are the smallest seal species. They only get up to about 150 pounds. Ring seals have different body parts that help them survive in the wild. So if you look at his back flippers, Spencer swims using those back flippers as compared to Forrest who used his front flippers. If you look at Spencer's face, Spencer has ear holes compared to Forrest who had those external ear flaps. Spencer has whiskers just like Forrest does and that helps him when he's swimming in the water. He can feel those currents and then also sense his environment with them. If you look at Spencer's front claws, he has little nails on there. And for ice seals, that helps them survive on the ice. Um, they make these little layers in the snow that they live in, and those nails are used to help make breathing holes in the snow. Oh my goodness, Spencer. And actually, Spencer is um, in this exhibit behind me. This is Spencer swimming down here. You can't really see it, but, um, oh, there he goes. <laughs> so yeah, seals are so cool. And they also have four flippers to swim. They have one, two, three, and four. And um, unlike our sea lions that use their front flippers to really swim and push themselves forward, our seal friends use their back flippers, just like that, to swim. So you'll see them, you'll see them swimming around. Really cool. And um, they have ear holes, so that they don't have those external ear flaps like sea lions. They just have the hole, because they also need to hear. They have eyes, too, to see. And they have a nose. And they also have whiskers, because they also use their whiskers to find fish when it's dark in the ocean. Now their fur is a little different. Is it just one color? No, there's different, um, it's it different colors. It can be gray, white, sometimes a little black, and it's a pattern. So it's um, kind of like spots. Spencer right there um, is a ring seal, like Katie told us. And so it kind of has like little rings as its pattern. Tunu, who just swam by, is a spotted seal. And so it has little spots on its body. And we also have a harbor seal in here. He's really small. He, here he comes. And um, he has a different pattern. So um, they can come in different patterns and different colors too. Really cool, friends. So I um, want us to go into our activity today. We are going to be doing yoga with our um, sea lions. Hopefully they come out. This is pilot. So you need an open space, maybe some friends, and your, yourself, your body. So we're going to start um, on the floor, okay? And you're going to do a cat pose. And you're going to arch your back just like that. And you're going to get a nice big stretch. And then you're going to do cow pose. So silly. 
And we can hold this here for five seconds. Can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five. Yay. So now we're going to do the cobra pose, okay? You're going to extend your legs and gently come down. You can even lay down on the floor like this. And then with your arms, you're gonna push yourself up. And you can throw your head back just like that, gently. And you get a nice big stretch. Let's hold it here for four seconds. One, two, three, four. Okay, gently come back. We're gonna do another cat pose. And then cow. Nice. You probably can't see it, but Pilot is way up there laying on a rock. So let's go ahead and stand. And we're going to do a tree pose. Okay, this one's a little tricky. So you're going to balance on one foot or one leg, and then you're gonna take your other leg and bend it up like this. And you can put your hands together like this um, so you can balance yourself. And this is the tree pose. So let's hold it here for three, because this one's a little tricky. One, two, three. Good. And last, we're going to do the mountain pose. And this one, you just put your arms out to the side, and you breathe in, and then breathe out. Great, friends. OK, so thank you for stretching with me and Pilot, who's way up there and just relaxing. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to text them in right now, and I will do my best to answer them for you. Okay. Rebecca, we do have a question. Um, how do we get forests to do all those cool things? Oh, great question. Um, well, let's learn from mammologist Julie. Good up. All right, guys. Now you're probably wondering, how do we get forests to do all these cool things? And how we do that is through reinforcement um, telling Forrest he does a good job by giving him food. But also along with that, me and Forrest have a really great relationship. And so we really enjoy working together and being around each other. Good. What this relationship does is it allows us to take care of him. So we can see inside his mouth, open. We can brush his teeth. We can take his weight. Good, down. Good, roll can see all parts of his body to make sure everything looks healthy and he feels really, really good. So in case he gets sick or if he gets um, injured, that we can take care of him and we can have our doctors come um, and fix him right up. And Forrest have a really good relationship and that allows them to work well together. Oh, there's Pilot swimming. All right, we do have another question. Um, can Forrest do other things? Oh, can Forrest do other things? Yeah, let's take a look at what else he can do. Good, good job, buddy. Good wait. Good work. Good. Wait. Wait. Good, hun. Good. Good job, bud. Wow. He can do so many things because he uses those front flippers to walk on land and to do other really cool things on land. And in the water, you can see Pilot here swimming. Can you show me with your front flippers how to swim like a sea lion? Yeah, do it with me, just like that. Whoa, great swimming. All right, we do have one more question. What does Pilot eat? Oh, what does Pilot eat? Yeah, so Katie, who's asking the questions, Katie, you work with these animals. Tell us. Yeah, so Pilot really loves salmon. Um, he gets a lot of salmon each day, and then he also eats herring, capelin, and pollock, other kinds of fish. Whoa. <laughs> Hi, Pilot. Yeah, look at those front flippers. You see his whiskers? Yeah, so cool. Well, friends, if you have other questions, go ahead and text them. Um, we do have another question. Someone asked, what does Forrest eat? So Forrest eats the same thing as Pilot. He loves salmon as well and also gets capelin, herring, and pollock. Yummy. They get really good food. 
I like this. Yeah. So I do, um, I loved working with forests, but I do want to say seals, they're so, they're so cute because they just have so much mm -hmm. blubber. It's, they have a thick layer of fat that keeps them warm, and, um, and sea lions have it too, but they're so cute. All right, so one more question that we have um, is how much do the animals weigh? Oh so gosh. the ring seals that we have are the smallest seal species, and like I said in the video, they weigh up to about 150 pounds. 140 to 150, and pilot, um, pilot is a stellar sea lion, and they're the largest sea lion species, and males can get up to 2,500 pounds. Whoa. So currently, pilot weighs about 1,500, and he has a lot of growing to do. Oh my goodness, he gets even bigger than that. <gasps> wow, can you imagine? All right, so we got another question just now. Um, so what do they look like when they are babies? Um, so it depends on the species. With the seals, the ring seals are born um, in a wooly white coat called lanugo. Um, so when they come out, that's what they look like. But the sea lions, um, they're born like a really dark brown, almost black color. And then as they get older, they start to get a lighter coat. Wow. Here comes Pilot again. That's really cool. I'm learning so much. All right, so how long can seals and sea lions live? Um, so for sea lions, they live about 25 to 30 years. Um, the males tend to live a little shorter than the females. They can live longer. And then for the seals, we actually don't know. Um, for the ring seals, mm -hmm. Um, they're a species that has little known about them, so we don't know how long they can live for. Um, but yeah, we are working on figuring that out. Yeah, we're doing a lot of good work here at the Alaska Sea Life Center to take care of these animals and learn so much about them so that we can protect the species in the future. Okay, friends. So, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I also want to thank Alaska 529 for sponsoring this episode. And can we give a big thank you to the animals, to Pilot and the seals, for, learning, for letting us learn about them today. A big thank you. And I also um, want to thank my friends here for helping us out today. Next week, um, Taylor, who you've met, our friend Taylor, is going to be teaching you about sea otters. So fun and so cute. So, uh, Taylor, we'll see you here um, at 11 a.m. next week. And stick around for story time. Bye. Sandy Seal, A Tale of Sea Dogs by Suzanne Tate, illustrated by James Melvin. Sandy Seal. A Tale of Sea Dogs by Suzanne Tate, illustrated by James Melvin. Sandy Seal was a seal pup. Her head looked like a dog with no ears. But Sandy was much different from a dog. She had flippers and lived in the sea. Sandy Seal could swim and dive in just a few hours after she was born. But she was a mammal and couldn't live without her mother's milk. Can you count how many fish are on this page? Let's count together. One, two, three. Sandy's mother often nursed her while lying on the beach. Other seal mothers were there too, giving milk to their pups. The big sea dogs lay on their sides. They looked like giant bananas. Humans walked along the beach one day. The shy mother seals were scared and slipped quickly into the sea.
Ma! Ma! Sandy cried. Wait for me! But her mother didn't come back to get her until the humans went away. One day, Sandy was diving with her mother. The big seal was catching fish to eat. Suddenly, a hungry tiger shark swam near them. Help, Ma! Sandy cried. I'm scared! Quick, her mother said. Climb up on my back. Sandy held on tightly with her front flippers. Mother and seal pup swam quickly away from danger. That was scary, Sandy sighed. Her big, dark eyes looked bigger than ever. Just stay near me, her mother said, and you will be safe. But in only four weeks after birth, Sandy was old enough to be on her own. She had gained a thick layer of blubber from her mother's rich milk. Sandy's mother knew that it was time to say goodbye. She swam away fast. Where are you going? cried Sandy. Her big eyes looked sad. But it was Mother Nature's way. She had to take care of herself from that day on. Sandy dived every day for food, shrimp or small fish. She stayed alone most of the time. Sometimes she would rest in the water with other young seals. All of them rested with their heads up, looking like floating bottles. What color are the seals on this page? Blue. Sandy's seal grew larger and swam south to warmer waters. Other animals were there too, porpoises and young humpback whales. Sandy watched the whales catch food with their big wide mouths. I know the whales won't hurt me, Sandy thought. They only want little fish to eat. When she was tired, Sandy pulled herself onto the beach. She growled, grrrr, if other seals came too near. One day, Sandy had a fever and felt bad. I'll rest on that sandy beach, she thought. The young sea dog swam close to the shore. Sandy slowly pulled herself out of the water. Humans came along and saw her lying on the sand. Oh, let's help the young seal. Look at its sad eyes, one of them said. I think that it's cold. Here's a blanket we can put over it. Wait, seals don't need blankets, a little girl said. We shouldn't touch it. Let's tell the people who care for sick seals. Helpful humans came to get Sandy. They were careful to watch out for her sharp teeth. Helpful humans put Sandy in a dog crate. They took her to a special place for sick seals and gave her food and medicine. Sandy began to feel much better. Soon, Sandy's seal was well enough to go home. Helpful humans took her to the beach. They watched as the young sea dog pulled herself into the sea. I'm a seal of approval for helpful humans, Sandy thought. Then she flipped her flippers and swam away in the sea. <laughs>